Hi and welcome to this DTP web tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to animate a still image using Adobe Photoshop. So let's go ahead and open up our web browser and we need to download one quick image. So I'll put a link to this same image in the YouTube description. So this waterfall we're going to animate the waterfall here. Let's click download and then we'll open up this folder and just drag and drop that picture in there. So you, I'll put a link to this same image in the YouTube description and we'll go ahead and open up Photoshop. Let's drag and drop this picture into Photoshop. And for now, I'm just going to hide this timeline so we can see everything quite clearly. So the first thing we're going to do is make a quick mask. So we're going to use the quick mask tool here. If you don't see that tool, then you can look in the drop down options here. So if you hold your left mouse button, you'll see options in here. But for now, I'm just going to click on this tool right here. And we need to make sure black is selected on top. So click here and make sure that black is selected to so move to the bottom left. And on the one below, the swatch below, it needs to be white, the background. So click that one and drag it to the top left and click OK. And then we're going to create a layer mask or quick mask. So to do that, we use the paintbrush tool. And our brush size is a little bit big, so let's reduce the size a bit. And we'll select uh, this brush, soft round, yeah, this one here. So we'll click on that and we'll hold down the alt key and use the mask wheel to zoom in. <clears throat> really we just want to be able to see this waterfall here. And if we left click you'll see it will start to go red. So anything red is going to be a part of the selection. And we just want to select this waterfall here, right? So let's just fill this all in quickly. So take your time doing this, try and do it as accurately as possible. And we're just going to go around the edges in a moment just to tidy up. But we do a rough, quick rough selection like this. Should be fine. And then down here we want to um, really select some of this down here as well. So like up to about here. So let's just press the letter Z so we can zoom in. And we just tidy up down the edge here a little bit. It's worth putting a little bit of effort in. Maybe it will just look better in the end. And uh, across the top here, we just want to make the brush a little bit smaller. Let's make it smaller. And we'll hold down Z and use our left mouse button to zoom in here. And let's just get some of this here as well. You don't have to go right to the top edge here. Get quite close. So I think, uh, let's just zoom out. <clears throat> so you can hold down the Alt key to zoom in and out. And I think that's going to be pretty good for a selection. So we'll go ahead and click on this button one more time. And that creates a selection, but it's really selected everything on the outside and it's left the middle part. We want to select this middle part, the actual waterfall here. So to do that, we'll go to Select and Inverse. So basically now you can see only the waterfall part that we've drawn over is selected. What we want to do next is uh, copy this to a new layer. Let's just go to Edit Copy or press Control C. We'll create a new layer here. So we've got a new layer and we want to paste this into that new layer. So just go to Edit Paste or Control V here. So now if we hide the background, we'll see the waterfall here like this. Yeah. Okay, so I think um, what we want to do next is uh, what actually what we might do quickly is just see this darker part of the shadow here we want to get rid of that so we use the eraser tool really I made a little mistake there but we can let's just fix it so we click on the eraser tool and we'll make the brush size bigger here let's say like around that size we can actually turn the background on and we just want to get rid of uh, this little selection here so let's just hold down the alt key zoom in really just down here we don't want this part so make sure you select the top layer and we just draw down there you can see that's getting removed so we just remove a bit of this here this darker part we don't really want that okay so that's the waterfall selected on a new layer and let's hold the alt key and zoom out and what we want to do is now create a timeline so let's go to window 
and let's go to timeline and here you can see the timeline let's right click when first of all let's double click inside here and call it water zero one and we want to unlock the background so click the padlock here and we'll call this dg for background let's click on the waterfall let's right click and then set it to a convert to a smart object here so when we convert it to a smart object let's just pull this timeline up a little bit we're going to click on this button here create video timeline and then we can see our content inside here and we want to drag this to one second which will be 30 frames uh, which will be here so if you look at the little time code above you'll see 0 1 0 0 so that's one second is running at 30 frames a second here so we'll drag this to the same position so the background and the, the waterfall are in the same one second duration we'll expand this here and we'll go to the first frame so make sure you're in the first frame and hit this um, transform here when you hit that this little clock it's going to add a keyframe we're going to move to around frame 25 so you see 0, 0, 0025 down here and we'll hit the little dot here which will add another keyframe so let's drag down here and we'll click on the move tool so we can see what we're selecting so this is we can move this object now but we don't want to move it we want to transform it we want to stretch it let's press ctrl and t that allows us to stretch we're going to hold down the shift key and stretch from the bottom downwards like this down to around here something like this and then we'll hold down the sh actually yeah we'll hold down the shift key and we'll drag out to the left a little bit just a little bit like this we'll click back on the move tool and we're going to zoom into the top here so hold the letter z and zoom right in if when you zoom when you hold down the letter z and it doesn't zoom in it ends up zooming out you need to make sure the plus zoom is selected not the minus one here plus zoom yeah and we just zoom into the top here and we want to align these see these two little blue sections we want to align them we we'll try and get this aligned because it's misaligned at the top so we we'll use the move tool and just drag it up a little bit so that they overlap quickly around here something like this should be good around right about here okay so let's hold down the alt key on our keyboard and we can use the mouse wheel to zoom back out and we'll drag this dot right to the end so if we click play we can now see the waterfall moving like this but it does obviously looks a bit rubbish so let's fix that a little bit so what we want to do I'm just going to kind of zoom in towards the bottom here we want to add a we want to create almost like a layer mask right so to do that we'll right click on this background at the bottom and duplicate it to make two copies and we'll drag that above this um, waterfall here and we we'll call this like BG let's just call it BG mask then we'll go to layer and we'll go to layout mask and click reveal all and then we'll see this white background here this little white this is the layer mask itself and really we want this to be black right so let's just um let's see uh let's switch it to black here and we'll go to these three dots here click on it and go to the paint bucket tool and then just click in the camera make sure this white one is selected on the right hand side and click here now you'll see it's all black right now what we'll do is go to the paintbrush tool and make sure our layer mask is still selected and switch it over to white and let's make the brush bigger let's set it to around that close to 250 and we'll make it um, a softer edge right soft round like this one here and we're just going to paint out this waterfall and we kind of want it flowing in like rounded off at the bottom here something like this will be pretty good right so let's click play now and after it buffers a little bit you'll see the animation sequence we can see we missed that a bit down the bottom here so let's go ahead and stop this let's move across the timeline and we can see that here you can see here so let's get rid of this here let's tidy it up a little bit here okay let's click play one more time and we hold down the alt key and we can zoom oh, actually we have to stop it first hold down the alt key we can zoom out a little bit and click play now you can see the waterfall so you can see it's looping but it doesn't look very good because it's kind of stopping 
so at the end it stops and jumps so we want to uh, kind of we want to fix that basically I think we'll get rid of a little bit around this edge as well so white will remove from this top layer mask you need to make sure you slip to this black background here and white will remove and, and uh, the black color will basically add the waterfall back in yeah so you can add and remove so if you remove too much don't worry about it you can always switch it to black and white to add and remove okay so let's loop this first thing we want to do though is just click on this um uh these these crossfades here so we've got different types of crossfade and we just want to select fade and drag it to the bottom one here the waterfall here or water zero one so that's going to fade in and then we drag it to the end part and that's going to fade out so now waterfall animation will fade in and out fade in and out and we want to loop this so let's minimize this um this layer this uh waterfall layer just make sure it's minimized and we're going to click let's see we're going to select the top two layers only these top two not the bottom one just the top two so click on the top one hold down the shift key and click on the one below we're going to right click and uh let's see we're going to do um group from layers and click ok so that makes this a group now you can see this gray bar that's a group and you can expand it and see what's inside of it it's the same stuff but it's just a group now so we see two on the timeline let's um drag up here and normally when i'm not using these tools i'll select the um the move tool as default yeah the move tool so what we want to do is duplicate this group so we're going to right click and go uh duplicate group and we need to do this like six times So we've got six copies of this group and what we want to do is move this timeline cursor to frame 15 can you see it says 0000, 0, 0, 0 frame 15 that's halfway point because it's 30 frames and this is bang in the middle so what we want to do is not drag this second one but drag the third one down so that the beginning starts from here then all we're going to do is drag these other ones so that they start at the halfway point so if we drag this one to here you can see it's like the halfway point of this one and we drag the next one to the halfway point here like this so they're overlapping now like this okay so this background layer we're going to drag it to the halfway point here and this layer here we're going to drag it backwards so it sits here at the halfway point so this is kind of half cut at the beginning now the loop will work properly in theory we should be able to uh, let's see I think we're going to drag this this cursor to here right here let's test it so let's quickly go file save as we just save this here and um, when we click play it's not going to look it's going to be a bit it's going to judder but once it's buffered it will play quite smoothly and that's a good loop that's working pretty well so we've taken that and now we've animated it using Adobe Photoshop basically right and you can go and animate other things as well it's not necessarily just the water but I thought that's a quite easy example to show you um, in this in this particular Photoshop software version right so I'm using Adobe CC so if we zoom in a little bit we're about to see this a bit clearer let's drag the timeline down here we'll zoom up let's move up a little bit and you can see it looks quite realistic and then you can go and um use this in something like um make a little gif animation out of it let's try and see what file formats we can save this as let's go to file export uh let's see export as you've got render as video here right so let's try that first let's render as video and we'll have to render it at, at its current resolution so let's just see how that works it's going to render in the same folder let's just try that Okay, so in this folder we should have a mp4 file now so here it is if we 
could set that to uh, repeat. And it will stop at the end depending on what software you're using. Um, in terms of Windows software, it's going to have a slight pause at the end when it loops back around. Kind of seems to be looping okay. Let's just see if it loops clean. Yeah, but it looks pretty good, right? So now you can take that, maybe upload it to um, Facebook or share it. You can do other stuff with it. You could add some text in here as well. There's nothing stopping you from adding text. You can crop it out and have it as a sort of a, a video to, to put on Instagram or whatever you want to do. So that stands you now. So you can just save this as um, a GIF animation as well. It would be a pretty heavy GIF file to be fair, but you could save it as GIF. But I think if you're going to have it as an animation, it's better to probably save it as an MP4. And then you can upload it to Facebook or somewhere like that. So maybe um, we'll give it a quick test now and see how it looks like when we upload it to Facebook. So let's open up the web browser. I've got my Facebook page loaded up here. And let's try and drag and drop that video into Facebook. And let's just say uh, still image animated in photo. Example one. Let's click share. So I think this will upload, but I think um, Facebook will need to convert it as well. So it may take a few seconds for it to convert the MP4. So what I'll do is I'll pause the video. I'll wait for Facebook to finish uploading, and we'll come back and look at the the video in Facebook as well. Okay, so the video is finished uploading to Facebook. If we click play, we can see the waterfall animating in Facebook. So we've taken a still image, we've managed to quickly uh, animate that in Adobe Photoshop and I'll be making some more tutorials on some more advanced animation as well. But this is just a basic example and in Facebook it should just continuously loop like this, which is a, a nice little feature. And you can you could have added stuff down the side. You could actually take this video now and take it into some other software like um, uh, Movie Edit Pro or DaVinci Resolve and you can do some other work to it, right? You could add stuff down the side add some animated text on it you could do whatever you want but this is a nice quick way to animate some still images using Adobe Photoshop so let's close this down let's close this that's the end of this tutorial and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial